Well, you guys are in for a treat today. Welcome, welcome. This is Marnie. I'm here today with Janet Perez Eccles. We are going to be talking about feed your body, mind, and soul. And we're going to be discussing how to embrace complete health to live triumphantly, choose food that will enhance our energy, strength, mental alertness, and focus, how to choose thoughts to feed your attitudes, peace, wisdom, and success, and how to analyze your emotions to prevent them from determining your behavior. Our guest today is Janet Perez Eccles. She's triumphed over unthinkable tragedies because of God's grace at work to bring supernatural balance. She's an international speaker, an award-winning author, and she has been called a powerhouse of motivation. She's here to show us how to overcome fear and allow crisis to release the greatness God's placed in you. Come transform your thinking as she ignites your passion to turn obstacles into opportunities. Her website is JanetPerezEccles.com, and you can also invite her to speak over at WomenSpeakers.com. I'm super excited to welcome you, Janet. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Marnie. I think I'm more excited than you because we're going to talk about a, a topic that I am just uh, off the charge passionate about. So, so yeah. For, yeah, for those of you who don't know Janet, and she's just, uh, I don't know when our paths first crossed, my dear. I know it's well, been yeah. well over a decade, oh, probably yeah. closer to two. And, um, and she is blind. You've been blind since you were 30 years old um, due to a degenerative disease of the eye. And yeah. yet... You are one of my heroes uh, because <laughs> you've taught me so much about being brave and going with God wherever he calls us to go, whatever he calls us to do. And, uh, you know, I like to tell the story about when you went uh, by yourself traveling and uh, you told me, oh, I think it's easier for me to go internationally by myself than it is for you. And I couldn't understand. I was like, why would you say that? You can't see. <laughs> and you just said this most profound thing you said. Well, for you, you can see if there's someone sitting beside you. But for me, I can't see that. So since Jesus is always with me, I just can see him as clearly as I can see a person. And that radically changed my perspective of faith because we do kind of walk by sight a lot of the time. And you've been forced with your life circumstances to learn how to walk by faith and not sight. Amen. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So when you look back over these years, um, what has been one of the uh, moments where you were like, okay, this right here, if I had been able to see, this wouldn't have gone the way it did, but because I was blind, I had an opportunity here to understand something about God or to uh, step into something that maybe um, you wouldn't have had if you weren't blind. Exactly, Mark. And that's exactly the key. And that's what we're going to talk about. What is it that I learned? What is it that gives me that, like you said a moment ago, the courage, the faith, and passion to, passion to do things that I probably would have never done, Mark, yeah. if I could see? Yeah. And I think if I could um, summarize it in one word, it would be balance. Mm. Let me tell you what I mean. For me to be able to endure what I have, I had to learn by God's grace is the value and the importance of balance. And that is how do we feed, how do we maintain our body, our emotions, and our mind healthy? And as you know, today, we're living in tough times. Suicide is an all-time high. Our fear and anxiety, depression is growing more and more every year. What is going on? How are we supposed to live triumphantly and have that abundance life that Jesus asked us to, to, to live? And so what I learned through the years is, I guess it's what I call is the powerful trio to triumph. Mm -hmm. What we feed our body, our thoughts, our emotions. And that has been something that, that really truly has transformed my life. You know, you say I'm blind and I'm thinking, no, I'm not. Oh, this right, I can't see, but I don't live like a blind person. You know, I, I, I do the things that I need to do. And I think what I would want to do if you allow me money, I'm going to begin with a story, if that's okay with you. Sure, yeah. Um, when I received a phone call, no mom or parent ever wants to receive, telling us our 19-year-old Joe, who was the captain of a football team, he was captain of the lacrosse team, he always attended his Bible study, he was a leader, he was handsome, witty. They told us he was wounded. We rushed to the emergency room. We waited and waited, pleading to God, what happened to him? Lord Jesus, just allow him to make it through whatever it is. 
After a while, the doctors walked in the, the emergency room and they said, are you the parents of Joe Eccles? I said to my friend, I said, yes, we are, what happened to him? When can we take him home? And that's morning when well, the doctor told us that he'd not survived the 23 stab wounds he had received. As you can imagine, my world just crumbled. I was numb with pain. But you know, in the midst of my agony, I heard God's voice so, so clearly say to my heart, be still and know that I am God. The nurses were pressing a pill in my palm of my hand saying, ma'am, take this, take this, and were handing me a glass of water. I think they thought any moment now I was going to go hysterical, but I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna stop my story there. What was going on in my life, in my mind, in my emotions at the moment? There was a balance. There was a, a, a power of God at work that allowed me to endure that, to survive that, to be able to have the strength and the peace to console my husband, my parents, our other two sons. Something was taking place. And I'm here to tell you with everything in me that it was a balance between my physical, my emotional, and my mental health. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go through each one for you to see exactly how that plays out in anybody's life, especially now that so many people are going through hard times. So let's talk about the first one. Help. I think that night I probably would have been just a basket case had I not taken care of my health. And, and I mean that with all sincerity in my heart because I've always been very conscious of what I ate, what I needed to prevent eating. And so I had the physical fortitude to endure that. I also had the wisdom and the calmness always fill my mind with thoughts of the Lord. That's why his word came to my heart first. Secondly, I knew that I, I had learned all those years being blind, how to conquer my emotions. Yes, I could have been hysterical and just, you know, blown up and, and, and heartache and scream and like most moms did, most mothers would, but I remained just so focused. I remained steady, receiving God's comfort, receiving his peace. Obviously, you know, those who are watching this may not have gone through such trauma, or maybe they have, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, how do we do that? How do we prepare our bodies mm -hmm. to endure so much? So feeding our body, people people are a little crazy these days with all these diets and all these fads. And I know, you know, people who are vegan, who are vegetarians, who are pescatarians. I don't know what that all means. I don't know what they do. I never tried it. But you know what I did try? Are you ready? I'm Hang ready. On I became a templatarian. You probably never heard of it. A templatarian is the newest thing. It's so brand new. You know why? Because I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> a templatarian, I drew that from God's word. Mm -hmm. He said our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If that's the case, Marty, then we need to make sure that we take care of our body by honoring God and what we put in it and what we prevent from going into it. So three simple steps to do that. Number one, you know, the Bible says, men shall perish from the lack of knowledge. So gain knowledge. What is it that hurts your body? What are the toxins, the additives, the chemicals that you should put in your body? And I would say, if you want to be healthy, don't begin with a diet. Don't begin in the refrigerator or in the kitchen. Begin in the aisle of the grocery store. <laughs> Have you seen an, an, an item that says on the front, fiber added vitamin c you know your doses you think oh that's good and you pick it up but then turn it around read the ingredients usually in tiny print and you read all these things all kinds of sugars fructose sucrose, sucrose uh, harmful oils preservatives and chemicals that shouldn't go in our body not into the temple of holy spirit so if it doesn't go in your body it doesn't go in your shopping cart <laughs> even if you're shopping online so that's my number one rule my family already knows, oh, there's mom. I know, mom, you're going to ask a lot of the ingredients. <laughs> so I'm very, very careful to do that, number one. Number two, and in all these years that I've been a templatarian, and I'm not going to boast, this is because of God's grace. I gained five pounds since the day I graduated from high school, <laughs> except, of course, when I was pregnant. But not the weight so much. It's If you wake up in the morning, zero pain, zero meds, that's the help that God wants us to have. And the way to do it is to honor that body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, you probably think, oh, how boring. 
I can't believe I can't have a donut of my M&Ms, right? Well, my hubby makes these little treats, those the little pretzels, and he puts a little melted bowl on top, puts it in the oven for a few minutes, and takes it out, pops an M&M. They're his favorite, okay? So he gave me one. I took one bite, and yes, let me tell you, my taste buds went into celebration. It tasted good. But let me tell you the reason I didn't finish eating it. Because I knew that if I continued to eat one and then another and another, yes, my taste, uh, taste buds would be happy. But you know what? In the long run, my body is not going to be. So I had to say no. And it is the most amazing, amazing feeling and reward when you say no to something that's going to harm you. Because what you're doing is, is honoring the Lord. And you know what? You're obeying him by using that self-control. Now, I'm going to be fair with all of you. I do have recipes in my, in my YouTube channel of super healthy snacks and treats. So that's not to say we live a boring life, but just be careful. What is it that goes in your body? I know the Lord of what you put in it, right? Okay. You ready for the next point? Or yep. do you have a question? Number two. <laughs> next point. All right. What do we feed our thoughts? Well, I think our thoughts are the vehicle of the, are the steering wheel of the vehicle of life. Our thoughts really set the direction. I'll give you an example. When I first lost my sight, I adjusted to cleaning and cooking and doing everything else. By the way, when I cook, I have my criteria is always nutritious, delicious, and so simple. You can fix them with, a, with your eyes closed. <laughs> so I remember thinking, Lord, what's going to happen? What does a completely blind person do in this world? I couldn't work in the business which I got my degree in. But then I had the opportunity to take a test to be an interpreter. I took the test and passed it, obviously flying colors because they sent me to my first assignment in the court. And when I was there, I was thinking, Lord, this is amazing. I couldn't believe God was giving me the opportunity. But then as I sat there morning, I began to think, what am I doing here? I don't know the first thing about interpretation. I spoke Spanish and still speak it. I don't have the skills, the experience. I have nothing. I'm going to go in that courtroom which I've never stepped for in a courtroom in my life, and I'm going to make a fool of myself. Mm. And we had cell phones. I would call my husband and say, pick me up, I'm out of here. But you know what? What I was thinking, Marty, was I was already having thoughts of my failure. I was having thoughts of my limitations, of my weaknesses, and then I stopped. Wait a minute. God tells us to think about what's pure, what's holy, what's lovely, what's love, uh, admirable, what's praiseworthy. Think about those things. So I changed my thinking. I said, Lord, you know, if you open this door, I know you're going to help me through it. You're going to do for me what I can't do for myself. You're going to show me that your hand is upon this new, new adventure. I will learn something. And I just want to thank you. They call me in. I finished the session. And the judge called me to the stand and said, Miss Madam Interpreter, I want you to know that I'm also bilingual and I very much admire your level of accuracy. Yay! <laughs> I just went, thank you, Rana. I sat down. And that began a 30 year award winning career as a Spanish interpreter. Hmm. Let me tell you why I, I share that story. Had I allowed my thoughts. Right. Where would I be? Yeah. I'd be sitting at home thinking, oh, I wish I would have. I don't know if I could. Our thoughts are so powerful. Let me give you another example. You're driving on the road. In Orlando, we have crazy traffic, right? Crazy drivers. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're driving on the road and somebody cuts in front of you. What's the first thought? Oh, oh my God, that idiot. I can't believe he did it. Oh, my gosh. He could have caused an accident. I can't believe people like that. Your mind's being filled with that, right? Um, that's... Option number one. Number two is you're slamming your brakes and think, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. That was so close. I just praise you, Father. You protected me. Thank you. I know you are with me, Lord. I pray for that person. I pray that you just transform his or her mind. But I just want to know that I acknowledge your presence. You just protected me. Okay. What's in our heart comes through our lips. And what's in our mind comes through our attitude. One way of thinking could have stressed you possibly for the rest of the day, gotten your blood pressure high, and the other one brought peace. See, I believe, money is that we cannot allow the circumstance to take power. We cannot give an item 
a circumstance, a situation, someone else's behavior have the power to control us, to control our thinking or our emotions. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think that is so, so crucial. And, uh, you know, the things of life that right now, you know, you open social media and you get angry, you get sad, you get depressed, you get envious, somebody else has it better than you. What are you going to allow your mind to be filled? You know, where is your focus going to be? I don't do social media. I have my system pull some inspiration for me now and then, but, but I understand social media is one of the number one causes for depression. Mm -hmm. How can that be? You read something and you formulate your thoughts because your thoughts end up being the words that you say, the words that you say to the attitude that you have. And your attitude sometimes allows you to make the choices wrong or right. And those choices, as you know, Marnie, can sometimes determine your destiny. My destiny turned out different because I chose to think, you know, I may not be able to see, but I'm not blind. I may have blindness, but I'm not going to let blindness rule my life. And I'm still going to serve the Lord. So your mind, feed your mind, non-toxic thoughts, right? Absolutely. And you you went on, you, one of your, a first book, I think, was it your first book, Salsa Dancing? Salsa uh, Dancing. Second, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have, but you have just had another one out recently yes. that won some awards. So what was the name of that most recent one? That one is Now I See How God's Amazing Grace Transformed the Deepest Pain to Shining Joy. Yeah. I got it from the song, you know, I was, was blind, but now I see amazing yeah. grace. Yeah. yeah, because show me money. And now I see, now I can really see the beauty of life, the abundance that Jesus meant us to have. Yeah. Not because my life has been easy, <laughs> it's been pretty sad. but I, I learned to, to be healthy physically and mentally. So are we ready for our healthy emotions? We are. Let's move into the emotions. Okay. Emotions, as we know, are real, but they're often not true. Let me give you an example. When my first book came out, I didn't know how it would do. I, know, I had never written a book. I use a computer with a voice synthesizer that reads me the, the screen so I, I can hear what I'm typing. So writing is super easy. So on my first book, people being inspired and I was be, I was beginning to receive invitations to speak. No problem when I was able to travel around here in Orlando where I live. But when I started receiving invitations out of state, I thought, oh my, my husband can go with me because he was working. How can I try? being completely blind. I mean, how would I do that? No, I don't think I could do that. I was afraid, a little bit anxious. What if I ended up in the wrong place? What did I, did I couldn't find someone to help me? So fear started to fill my heart, but then I stopped. I thought, wait a minute. If I know God's word, if I, if I believe his promises, then I have to remember what he said to me. He said, he's not giving me a spirit of fear, but he has given me a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He gave me the power to conquer whatever obstacles. He gave me the love to promise, the promise he would never leave me. And he gave me the sound mind to make wise decisions. So I did. I called in the airline and told them I'm blind and I need an escort to help me navigate to the, to the airport. And they did. And I made sure that someone was going to be there to pick me up. And, and life was good. So that was about 20 years ago. And now I travel by myself out of the country, around the world. United States and traveling is the most wonderful, wonderful experience for me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why you share that. Because had I allowed fear to control me, and by some standards, maybe it was justified because no completely blind person should be traveling out of the country by themselves, right? <laughs> but I couldn't do that. I had stored in my mind, in my heart, such a deep knowledge of what God says, of what he promised, that I did not allow that fear to control my behavior. Because my behavior could have been to, I have to be cautious. I have to be very careful. I should only go places if I have somebody with me. Oh, I can't go there. I can't do that. I don't have that behavior. I don't have that that approach to life. Instead, I think, yep, I'll be there. Different, <laughs> there have been times where I was invited. I didn't know who the person was. I never met him, obviously. I didn't know what the church was. I wasn't even familiar with that city. It was in Santo Domingo somewhere. But I went, and it was a great experience. What an adventure. 
So you see, we have emotions for fear, anxiety, guilt, anger, depression. But Marty, you got to know that for each emotion that can be destructive, God has a word. He tells us, be not afraid, for I am with you. I am your God. I will guide you. For anxiety, he says, be anxious for nothing. Nothing, nada. <laughs> for guilt, he has his word that he has set us free from that. He took all that guilt on the cross, the guilt and shame. The pressures, he said, he's our ever-present help and trouble. If he's with us, he's ever-present every moment, night and day. Why should we feel sad? Why should we be depressed? Blindness, tragedy, injustice, divorce. I've seen it all. But the Lord has always been faithful. I had to do my part and use my wisdom, like I told you, to, to take care of my, my health. What do I feed my body? Feeding it, things that honor the temple. What do we feed my mind? Thoughts that get me closer to the triune. And what do I feed my negative emotions? I feed them with God's word that will counteract every negative emotion. And now you and I are, we, we have passion for life, right, Marnie and our ministry is up. So we are just full, of, we can be you know, full of joy and excitement and passion. But today it seems like more women are being filled with negative emotions. And you know, as well as I do as an author, you know, you get a letter, no, your book is not a good fit for our publishing house. It's like, Oh, you know, you just want to, you're so excited about the possibility of having another book out and you get a rejection letter. And what do your thoughts tell you? Mm. What do your emotions tell you? Do you succumb to them? Do you allow them to, to have power? So, you know, my prayer is that I can help people see that it's not hard. God never asked us to do something that's impossible because he said, with me, all things are possible. So trust them to give you the help for your physical body, the help for your mental health, the thoughts, and the emotions. So there you have it, Marnie. What do you think? Yes. Doable? Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I like to think about, um, you know, faith. No. It talks about faith in the Bible. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, be removed, and it will. So faith isn't the size of something. But I think what it is, is it's the size of our God. Like, what is my faith in? And the bigger I understand God to be, the greater my faith is. Because if he's a small God, um, the mustard seed of faith doesn't just go very far because my opinion of him is small. But as I recognize how great big he is, how you know, I listened to your stories of you trusting him for protection as you're traveling blind uh, places and your God, your picture of this real God is very big. And that gives you so much faith to go forward. So when you think of faith, what is, uh, how do you kind of think of it? Yeah. Let me tell you something about faith. People think, and people have told me in the past, believe it or not, Marnie, that, you know, just have to have faith. God will heal your eyes. So in that sense, People say, well, poor me, it's my fault. I don't have enough faith, which I don't think that's what God meant. Faith means truly believing in his healing, even though you still see things have not changed. For example, my faith went off to the charts, but I'm still blind. God didn't heal my physical eyes, but boy, Marty, he gave me something so much better. He healed my spiritual eyes. I think sometimes we have, we want to have faith to remove the obstacle. But really, with the obstacle there, you can still have that abundant life. You can still have that peace and reassurance, that comfort and that confidence and that triumph, even if the obstacle is there. You see, my my son was not brought back to life. And I, I, I know that I shared with you in other episodes that the man who killed him suffered a scratch on his cheek. He was tried in, the, in a court of law. And he was found totally innocent. He pled self-defense and the jury found him innocent. Nobody can believe it. So what do I do in spite of that? I have faith in God. I have faith in his justice. But how could he let me down that way? But see, my faith had to continue to be focused on him because he was bigger than any verdict. He was bigger than any pain. And, you know, in believing that and holding on to my faith, what happened then is that horrible injustice 
turned to something beautiful. And what I turned to is the freedom I was able to experience when you learn to forgive somebody. Yeah. Once again, I had to fill my mind with God's word. I had to feed my emotions with his promises that he would turn all to good for those who call. I love him and according, according to his purpose. So you could say, well, if the man would have suffered a life sentence in prison, then I could forgive him. Or if he would have been found guilty and suffered something, but he didn't, he went home free. But all that to say is that my faith can't be on what the circumstance mm -hmm. is to change or not change. Your faith, like you just said, has to be in a God, powerful, creator of heaven and earth, who's bigger than anything we can face. Yeah, and who has a who sits desiring to bring good out of every terrible circumstance? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, it's hard to see that now, right? The, the world we're living in, the chaos, the world's a mess. So I think that's why God is calling us more than more than ever, you know, have a healthy balance in your life. Um, you know, I I could be, you know, a guru and, and diets and fitness and all that, but if I don't come up, control my mind and my emotions, I don't have the balance to endure tough times. Right, right. It's, all, it's all, yeah. yeah. So as you were talking about, um, looking into the word to find um, to find emotional support and things like that. I was thinking of of truth and how most of the time when we are struggling in our minds, it's because we're believing a lie of some kind. Uh, can mm -hmm. you think of a time in your journey where a lie was really debilitating and what happened? Oh, do I have a big one? Are you ready? I hope you're sitting down this morning. Okay, because I'm I am. Sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, initially, when I lost my side, my husband couldn't take the trauma and he found somebody else. And of course, blinded, single mom, rejected, my marriage falling apart. I was a basket case. That's when my journey began looking to Jesus. Mm. Fast forward, God healed, eventually healed our marriage. I forgave him. But on our 42nd anniversary, he was at the computer. He wasn't taking me out to dinner or brought me roses or anything to celebrate our anniversary. Instead, he was planning our finances because he was planning to divorce me. Huh. That was, that was to me devastating. He was a good man. He was a leader in our church. Everyone loved him. He was successful. He was kind. He was a great father. I didn't know there was a, a dark side of him. And that just totally crumbled my world. And that's when I thought, now what? How could I continue ministering to women and my own marriage fell apart? How could I go on writing and inspiring people when I'm just a mess? I don't think I could go on. What I just mentioned those were lies, lies for the enemy, who's trying to help me focus on what I was suffering, or what it could be, what I had failed, what he had done to me, all the negative, all the shame. And I had to stop and think, wait a minute, I went once again with every breath I took, and it was a struggle. I said, Lord, I'm going to believe in you. I don't know how you're going to turn this. I never dreamed in my, in my worst nightmares that I'd be a divorced woman. I began to believe in his truth that he says, as we all know, the plans for us are not to harm us, but to prosper us. And he promised a hope and a future. So here I am, 67 years old, completely blind, rejected, divorced. How could he, what plans? Could God possibly help for me, you know, at this stage of my life? But I had to believe. I had to trust. I had to hang on to what he could do, not what I thought could happen. Two different things. And I thought, you know, Lord, you parted the Red Sea. <laughs> not that I was looking for a husband ever, because who's going to want to date a blind woman, right? <laughs> Maybe another blind man, but I didn't want a blind man, really. <laughs> it would not be a good company. So I wasn't even entertaining the thought. Lo and behold, I was invited to a local church. My mom and I started to attend. And I uh, spoke at the last service. And this gentleman came up to me at the book table and he told me how much I inspired him. And he said, you helped me live again because I was devastated after my wife died two years ago. And I hugged him and said, well, thank you. Well, he didn't know I attended that church. So I saw him the next Sunday, we talked a little bit, and then he emailed me, and then he called me, and then he invited me to dinner, and I thought, 
more like, I can't go to dinner at my age. You know, I've only been divorced about a year. There's no way I can't do that. It's going to be awkward. He does not believe me. Blah, blah, blah. Lies, lies, lies. So my friend said to me, can it get out of life? Get your big girl pants on. I'm not to dinner with a man. I did. And, and the said, rest oh, is history. <laughs> years, so yeah, that line could have sunk me in, but I refuse to believe that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think I think what happens is that we get lies in our head and they become stories. And then we are just completely debilitated. And I always just think the enemy's goal for you, for anybody, is to get you in a fetal position and keep you there. Completely yes. useless to yourself or to anyone else. Uh, but God's got a whole different plan for you. Janet, one of the things I love so much about you is you are such an inspiration to all of us that when we are facing a challenge, even when it seems insurmountable and completely unjust or unfair, that there is a God who cares, who loves us, and who has a future for us, a hope Amen. and a future. Thank you for living it, for sharing it, and for doing it so beautifully and so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Yeah, we're here to have fun, inspire, and just be obedient, right? Yes, that's right. And you guys want to totally check out Janet's stuff. She has books. Ja uh, it's over JanetPerezEccles.com. When they get there, Janet, what are they going to find? They'll find a gift for them. It's a free copy of my book, my third book, Contagious Courage, Your 30-Day Journey to Overcoming Stress and Anxiety. They'll find also a way to sign up for my blog so I can continue to inspire them. And, of course, they'll find a link to my new award-winning book, Now I See How God Transforms the Deepest Pain to Shining Joy. Yeah, love it, so love I it. To come and visit me. Yes. Awesome. So that's Janet Perez .com. And you can also invite her to speak at an upcoming event uh, via women .com. You've been a featured speaker over there for a long, 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 long yes. time. And so love promoting you there. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. Thanks, Janet, for joining us. Thank you, Marnie. Okay, you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.